Hi, I'm Rebecca Williams and welcome to day two of Marketing Secrets, three tools for your small business. So last time, last Friday, we talked about your one-liner and how your one-liner is really important to communicate your business and what you're doing. It's actually the first line of offense in getting people to pay attention to what you're doing. So we talked about how to make it really clear and really simple and also to really communicate the essence of your brand and how it is different from all the other brands out there, all the other people doing similar things to what you do, but not just the way you do it. So that was last week. This week we're gonna talk about taglines and we're gonna get into that in a minute. What's a tagline? Why do we need it? And we do all need it. Even if you're a small business, you need a tagline. And next week, uh, which is going to be August 25th, same time, 10 a.m., we are going to talk about the, the basics of a great website, especially of a great landing page. How are you communicating your business and how are people uh, interacting with that communication? So your website is an incredibly important piece of your business, as you know. So we're going to really take a look at what makes a, a good landing page uh, a good landing page so you can do that for yourself. Okay? But today, let's, uh, let's dig into taglines a little bit. So first, let's talk about, well, what is a tagline? Because what I know is that a lot of people get the what a tagline is. Um, it's mixed up in their minds. So a tagline is basically it is this really short phrase it's usually not a sentence but it's a phrase that says how your business is different from all the others and it also shares what the user is going to experience by getting uh, you know by hiring you so I'm gonna give you some examples soon but usually you see a tagline under the logo on a website landing page so for example, I mean, Coca-Cola, their tagline is uh, have a Coke and a smile. Red Bull is it gives you wings, right? So it's basically like this feeling that you're communicating about your business to um, the people who are interacting with it. And your tagline doesn't change. And you don't have many taglines. You have one tagline, and it communicates the essence of your business, right? Um, and again, I want to stress that it's about emotion and what people are getting to feel about your business, not necessarily what you're offering, okay? So we're going to get into that in just a second. But why do you need a tagline? Let's talk about that for a second. We talked about what it is, right? Tagline, again, is the short phrase that usually goes under your logo or, um, for example, on your website, if, if someone does a, a search on a browser, like a you know, Google search or something, and they find your website and it says name of business and then it says tagline, right? So that is where your tagline is going to live. It is a short kind of nutshell encapsulation of what you're offering to your clients, what you're what you're allowing them to feel, what they're getting to feel by interacting with you, okay? So um, why do you need it? Even as a small business, you need a tagline because people don't have time to read your whole website, have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with you for 30 minutes. They just need to know, what are you about? Give it to me in a short phrase so I can say, oh, okay. Right. And then you can dig into that relationship a little deeper if if you feel like it's a good fit for you. Right. So every business needs a tagline. It's not just for the Nikes and the Red Bulls of the world. It's actually for all businesses. And here's why a lot of small businesses don't have taglines. A lot of small businesses don't have taglines because it's really it's kind of challenging to do because you're putting your business into a tiny little nutshell of a phrase and as I said last week you're going to leave a lot out and that is hard to do because you feel so attached your business is your baby and you really want to share how it's amazing with um, all the other people who are interacting with it but you know modern world people just don't have time so you really need to boil it down for them help them get you help them get you fast so then they can make a decision of whether they want to go deeper or not, okay? Um, yeah, and if, if you're 
pounding too much information on them about what you do, why you do it, how they get to feel, they're, they're going to tune out. People are drawn to clarity and they're drawn to simplicity. So I want you to keep your message simple so people can get it fast and then engage, right? That's what this is all about. So taglines, that's what we're talking about today. We just talked about what they are, why you need them, even as a small business. And I would say even more as a small business because you have less time to, um, to uh, interact with people one-on-one. -on -one. So let's just get into this right away then. Um, we talked about what a tagline is and why. And so basically there are two points to a tagline. There are, the first point is that it's not about you, okay? And this is the hardest thing for people to understand. It's not about you. It's not about, for example, um, Rebecca Williams, my name, Rebecca Williams, um, awesome communication uh, guru, right? I'm not talking about me in my tagline. Um, and oh, I see Daniela is there. Hi, Daniela. Good to see you. Glad you're here again. Um, so it's not about me. It's about my clients, right? Taglines are often using the word you because we want we want the, um, the viewer, the person interacting with that tagline, to feel like we are talking to them, to feel like they're having the experience, right? So we're not talking about ourselves as business owners or what we have to offer, okay? Um, so it's not about you is point number one. So who are your clients? Who are your customers, right? What is their pain, right? And what do they want? So um, for example, I talked about uh, Red Bull a second ago. Red Bull says um, it gives you wings, right? So as a Red Bull, well, I'm, I'm not really a Red Bull drinker. My boyfriend's a Red Bull drinker, right? Why does he drink Red Bull? Well, because he wants energy and he just wants to be on for usually for the night, right? Instead of drinking a bunch of alcohol, let's drink some Red Bull so we have energy and we're energized for the night, right? So he wants wings, right? So what Red Bull is speaking to that. Um, Coke, again, and these are just, I'm using the most basic uh, um, taglines so you can understand what we're talking about and then we're gonna go a little deeper. Um, Coke says, have a Coke and a smile, right? Um, Coke knows that, well, Coke is actually manufacturing this, right? Because um, it's, it's doing two things with its tagline. It's basically saying that, um, you, you get to smile when you have a Coke, right? I didn't know I needed a Coke to smile, but now that idea has been implanted in my mind, so I'm going to feel that way, right? So it's a, it's a little, um, it's, it's tricky. Coke does a great job with that, and other companies do a great job with that. Um, but let's take so overview time, right? So it's not about you, and we're going to unpack that a little bit more. And the second one, and I keep, um, you know, pounding on this all the time, but it has to be simple, right? It can't be this long thing that people, you know, like fumble around with. It has to be super simple. It's often just a phrase, maybe like four or five words, all right? So we're keeping it simple. Um, let's look at an example. I'm going to use my handy, my handy um, board here. So I think I'm going to write a little higher. I think everybody knows the company Lyft, right? Lyft is the um, the peer-to-peer -peer ride sharing service, right? So um, you know, if you need, if you're out and about and you need a taxi. Um, at least in San Francisco, and I think in many cities around the country and around maybe around the world, I'm not sure. But Lyft is a ride sharing service, so um, people like you and I are driving our cars like taxi drivers, right? Um, but we're just normal everyday people often just like doing um, an extra side hustle for extra money. So, does anybody know the tagline um, for Lyft? You probably don't. I've never, um, oh, hi, Bonnie. Good to see you. Thanks for joining, glad to see you here. So we're talking about taglines today, okay? And tagline, just to refresh, because a lot of people misunderstand what it is, it is that really short phrase that, you know, for example, if I did a web search for Lyft and it would come up Lyft and then it would have a dash, 
and then it would have the tagline goes here, right? So it is the short nutshell encapsulation of what you do as a business. And every business needs this, even small businesses, and I would argue small businesses even more because you don't have time to explain what you're doing to people. It just needs to be short and sweet, right? So what's the lift tagline? Does anybody know? Probably not. So I'm just going to assume that you don't know it. Um, the lift tagline is, and I'm going to put it in quotes, a ride whenever you need one. Okay. A ride whenever you need one. Right? So let's break this down a second. First thing I want to point out is this magic word, you, right? Remember the first point of what I was teaching in that the tagline is not about you and your business, right, as a business owner. The tagline is about your customers, your clients, right? So the magic word is you. And for a lot of big companies, successful companies, you'll see that they're using the word you because it's about what the other, the purchaser, the client, the customer is going to feel, right? So magic word is you, keep that in mind. And let's look at these other two words. So a ride, right? So we're talking about a ride sharing service, like a taxi service, right? Um, a ride is super, it's a colloquial word, right? It's something a friend would say, like, hey, give me a ride, right? Hey, give me a ride. It's not transportation, right? It's not like um, a vehicle service, right? Or a, um, a transportation service, because that's too formal. So a ride is super friendly, okay? A ride is super friendly. And that is one of the things that Lyft is really offering, is a friendly experience getting you from point A to point B. It's not a normal taxi service, right? Because what do we know about Lyft customers? Well, Lyft customers, I use Lyft all the time. They're young, they're urban, right? They live in cities, and they just want it to be super convenient, right? They're not, they're not interested in the hassle of like, um, you know, for example, paying the taxi driver and, uh, you know, having to put in your credit card and that machine on the back of the seat and, you know, putting in the tip and it feels a little uncomfortable if they say, you know, how much do you want back? It, it's, it's kind of a, it's an inefficient and kind of an emotionally taxing service, right, to use a regular taxi. So what we know about Lyft drivers is that they're young, right, they're urban, they want a friendly experience. They don't want the standard taxi experience, and they want it to be super convenient. And that's where the second part of this comes in, right? Whenever you need one is talking about convenience, right? Right? So we're talking about a friendly and convenient um, way to get from point A to point B, right? So that's their tagline. It's not uh, talking about um, a million different things. It's just saying, hey, we're a ride. They don't even say that they're a peer-to-peer, a -peer, um, you know, uh, ride-sharing service. That's too complicated, right? Just speak to me, the customer, in plain and simple language. That's all I'm wanting you to do. Okay, in a tagline, all right? Uh, oh, thanks, you like the, the breakdown, Daniela, good, I'm glad. All right, so we've got the Lyft tagline, we've got friendly and convenient. Um, so, again, it's not about you, right? So for example, Daniela, I know you do, um, you do yoga teaching and training, and I'm sure you are amazing at what you do. I have no doubt about it. And your tagline, for example, and I'm not saying your tagline is this, but I see a lot of people whose businesses are themselves, right? You are your business. You, without you, your business would not exist, right? So a lot of people make the mistake of saying, um, you know, Daniela, and how do you say your last name? Cotreau. Daniela Cotreau. Sorry if I'm butchering that. I hope I'm not. Uh, Daniela Cotreau, um, yogi extraordinaire, right? And of course, you're not saying that. But again, this is mistake number one because you're talking about you, right? But at the end of the day, people don't really care about you. And I know that sounds harsh, but um, in a business context, people don't care about 
you and what you are right? They want to know what they're going to get from it. It's completely selfish and it's it's horrible to say, but it's, it's true. So let's just like be realistic about this. Let's get real. Um, it's, it's not about you as the, the yogi and all you have to offer. It's about what people get to feel, right? With lift, people get to feel uh, like a friendly sensation a convenience, a convenience about taking a ride. And that's huge because Lyft knows that that's what their customers want. Okay. Is that making sense? (laughs) I nailed your last name. Oh, good. I'm glad I didn't butcher it. That was, uh, it was dangerous waters. All right. Um, The second point. So the first point just to review is it's not about you. It's about what your clients and customers want to feel. Okay. We're using the magic word you, if at all possible. Okay. And if you can't, figure out how to use the word you, um, my sense is that you're, you're probably focusing on yourself, right? So challenge yourself to use the word you or your, right? Uh, just take the focus off yourself. It's not, it's not you. It's the focus is on your client, how they want to feel. Okay. Is that making sense? All right. I need to change your tagline. Daniela, put uh, type in what your tagline is. Let's take a look at it. Okay. Bonnie Bea says, uh, my tagline is healing for women with chronic pain. Okay. Well, Bonnie, what I'm questioning what your clients want to feel, right? They don't, okay. Maybe they want to feel healing, but I think there's something beyond that because healing is the action, right? Healing feels like a process. I'm talking like the aspirational, right? Um, so the aspirational here is I have a friendly, convenient ride, right? That is the end result. Friendly, convenient ride. That sounds great. I want that, right? So healing is the process that you're offering. Um, What is the end aspirational goal in a you statement? Um, And again, it's not a sentence. It's a short snippet. Um, Healing is vague. Let me think. Yeah. Yeah. And I think last time, Bonnie, I think you were saying something about... um, maybe this wasn't you, but freedom from pain or something like that. Um, let's like get into the body, right? Like what, is it relief? Is that what it is? Relief is a pretty potent uh, message. I know uh, I want relief from a lot of things in my life, right? Um, that we all do. Uh, Daniela, I was coming from what they're going to experience or get, but it needs to be more specific, I think, yes. Well, what type in what your um, what your tagline is now. Let's just see it, okay? Because I, you know, I kind of know what you do, but I don't 100% understand what you do. So just type in how you've given it a stab and let me, let me know, okay? So we're gonna wait for that to come in. Oh, here, you wrote it down already. Heart alignment transformation. Okay, well, here's the thing. Um, heart, uh, heart alignment and transformation, they're all a little, a tiny bit vague, right? They're a tiny bit vague. Transformation could be transformation of a lot of things, right? Uh, I could transform the way I uh, think about relationships. I could transform the way, like, my relationship to money, right? So many things. So what is the transformation? What kind? Like, let's get specific. Zero it in, okay? Uh, Bonnie Bea says relief. Yeah, delicious. Yeah, relief is really potent, right? Um, and especially if you're, you, if your clients are people who struggle with chronic pain, then relief is what they want. I would assume. I mean, I don't struggle with chronic pain, thankfully, but I know when I have a headache or something like that, I just want relief. And that is a, that's a, a delicious, um, sensation and feeling when you finally get it, when your pain stops, it's relief, right? That's the opposite or it's the, the flip side of their experience of pain. Okay. Um, all right. So Daniela, I just want to double check. You're saying that heart alignment transformation is your tagline. I just want to make sure. So type in like yes or no. And if it's not your tagline, type in your tagline. Okay. Cause definitely I'm not seeing any use in there. Um, so it's, it's unclear to me what that, what those three words mean. Okay. Um, so let's let's move on to point two. We already talked about how it's not about you, okay? 
Point two was keeping it simple, right? And I've already said that this is really challenging to do. Um, keeping anything simple is challenging to do, right? Uh, it's one of my specialties. I love making things simple. Uh, it's probably to a fault. I make things too simple sometimes. Um, but keeping it simple. So how do we do that? Well, first of all, you have a single core message, right? So Daniela, what I'm seeing on yours, uh, heart alignment transformation, you've got three core messages here, right? So that's why it's kind of getting lost for me. Um, all three of them are kind of vague. Uh, so that's another reason why it's getting lost, okay? So a single core message. Um, Single core message for Lyft, a ride whenever you need one, okay? Let me give you some more examples so you're understanding a little bit more. Um, looking at the comments, Bonnie, would you suggest healing for women with chronic pain? Healing for your chronic pain. Right, so Bonnie, you're, you're already, your audience is already women. And I think that's pretty clear based on what I know about you and how you're marketing yourself already. So I would take out women because that becomes third person. Then all of a sudden you're talking about this like nebulous group over here, you're not talking to me, right? So I want you to use you or your. So you said um, healing for your chronic pain. Uh, okay, so Again, healing. I don't like healing. Get rid of healing. Let's use relief or, or something like that. Healing is, is a process. It's vague, okay? Um, Daniela, I'm totally seeing how I need to include you. Yes, you do. Okay? Single core message, right? So what is your single core message, right? And this is a hard thing to do. My single core message is um, clarity, really. It's communication. Um, of course, I do a lot of other things with people, but I don't have time to say that, and uh, people will get confused. So narrow it down, focus in, right? Focus in, and then once they get through the door, then you can work all your other magic on them, okay? Um, oh, you meant relief, Bonnie. So uh, relief for your chronic pain. Yeah, I mean, that's already so much better. Um, now, Let's give it some texture, right? So a ride is a friendly transportation, right? What kind of relief are you offering? Can Let's see if we can get a little more um, emotional about it. Relief is emotional, um, but let's see how it feels if we put a, a descriptor in there. Like what kind of relief um, are, you, are you promising your people, okay? Um, so let's look at a few more messages. I'm gonna write them over here. So let's see how high I can go. So does everybody know, are you gonna be able to, yeah, you can read that. I think you know De Beers. De Beers is a diamond company, right? I'm sure you all know it, maybe you have one. I don't have a De Beers diamond and I'm fine with that. But De Beers, their tagline is, a diamond is forever. <laughs> A diamond is forever, okay? So there's no you in here, but the, um, uh, uh, the implied meaning here is that if you're not giving a diamond, and this is so brilliant what De Beers does, if you're not giving a diamond, are you really serious, right? So they're kind of challenging you. They're basically saying, well, you know, a diamond is forever. So I, I don't know what you're giving your lady, but uh, if, if it's forever, if you want it to be forever, you need to buy a De Beers diamond, okay? So that is the, a super simple tagline, but this whole forever word, it really hooks you, and it's, um, it's so emotional, right? Because, of course, if you're getting married, you want it to be forever. So they've really got their emotional hooks in you and what you want, okay? Another example is... Um, Airbnb, everybody knows Airbnb, okay? Airbnb, their tagline is um, experience, and I don't know if it's exactly the place, but well, you can just you know go along for the ride with me on this one. Experience the place, and then this is the important part, like a local, right? Like a local, right? So what is that saying? 
Well, nobody wants to be a tourist, right? Tourists are dorky. They carry cameras and they wear white socks with their sandals. So nobody wants to be a tourist. So they are really playing on that emotional um, hook of, no, I want to be a local. You know, I want to see this place like a local. So, and, you know, also if you're wondering, but there's no you in here. You said we needed you. Well, the you is implied, right? Because experience is a command word, right? It's a command uh, statement. So the you is actually implied here. Y-O-U. Whoops. Y-O-U. A little messy. But you experience the city like a local or the place like a local, okay? But again, it's a command. You don't need to write it in there, but it is implied, right? So you get that, how they're pulling on your emotional cords and they're saying, oh, well, you know, if you don't want to be a tourist, then, you know, you should use Airbnb and experience it like a local, right? So great tagline, Airbnb. Um, the last example I'm going to give you is, and Bonnie and Danielle, you probably don't know this because you don't have beards, but we've got um, Dollar Shave Club. So Dollar Shave Club is a, it's a men's, here I'm putting a line here so you don't get confused. Dollar Shave Club is a men's um, online uh, razor subscription service, okay? So, you know, you order your razors online, they come to your house, and um, apparently they're, they're pretty cheap and they're really good quality. I've heard great things. So their tagline is, is hilarious, so they get extra points for making me laugh. Their tagline is, it's just two short sentences, shave time, shave money. Shave time, shave money. How awesome is that as a tagline, right? They're making me laugh. They're saying just like super basic what they're offering. They're offering convenience and savings. And here they don't have a single core message. They have two core messages, but it's so simple that it works, right? So you can break the rules, but it has to be simple, right? Not this three things that I'm offering. You know, I know, I think, I don't know why having a three-pronged message became so popular because it's a really terrible way to go about messaging your business. So stop it, stop it, okay? Just one thing, or if you've got a really uh, easy, um, you know, like funny way to say it, okay, you can do two, but that's it, okay? I'm pulling the plug on the rest of it. So um, let me take a look at the comments. Um, practical daily for Bonnie's message, right? So daily, daily relief for your chronic pain. Yeah, I like daily better than practical. Practical feels a little... Um, like robotic or it doesn't feel emotional. Like practical is like, just get it done. And I think, I think if I have a lot of pain, I'm gonna want a little more care. I wanna feel more care around that. Um, so yeah, daily relief for your chronic pain. Yeah, yeah. Great examples. Oh, thank you, Daniela. Yeah, good. I love, I love all of these. Um, taglines. They're really wonderful. So, Daniela, what are you uh, ending up with with your tagline? Where have you brought it to? I'm curious. Um, okay, Daniela is asking, why do I think the three-pronged thing is not good? Well, first of all, I don't think it's good because A, a lot of people have been doing it for, I don't know, um, I don't know, 10 years something like that. I hear this all the time. I do blah, blah, blah for blah, 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 right? And when you hear something over and over and over again in the same format, you just get tired. Like, and, and you, you switch off and you're like, oh, this is bored, right? Boring. So, you know, it's kind of like I lived in Nepal for a little while and um, the Nepali people, I love them so much, right? Um, and they eat dal bhat every day like from my experience they eat it three times a day and I lived I lived in a, um, a boarding house uh, with I was teaching in a school there and um, they ate dal bat three times a day and it, it I complained about it uh, I, I wasn't being very tactful and and they were like well we like it so why not that was 
a really interesting experience for me because as Americans, uh, as Westerners, um, and I don't want to, you know, do a East West divide thing here, but I know that my culture, uh, everyone I know, we want variety, right? We want something different. So the fact that so many people are using this three pronged approach to talk about their small business, their, you know, solo uh, business that they're doing, it makes me bored, right? Just because everybody else is doing it. So I challenge you to do something different, right? Create something that feels unique to you. And that is like, it has energy to it. It has freshness because your business is your business. It's not somebody else's business. You're not following a template, right? So I want your business and the way you message it to feel unique to you. Okay. Um, Dollar Shave Club, shave time, shave money. I have never seen a tagline like this. And I know a lot of people think it's hilarious and they love it. And that is something that makes the brand, um, you know, it, it endears the brand to people. And I, I mean, if I were a guy and needed, you know, razors for my face, I would probably buy them from Dollar Shave Club because their tagline is so awesome, right? So does that make sense, Daniela? Um, yeah, you're saying, I hear that. It has the energy of, oh, there they go again doing that thing. Exactly, totally. When I have a, um, a friend who um, she, gosh, I'm, I'm trying to remember exactly the flavor of her business, but I, I asked her, so, you know, tell me like, what's your, what's your tagline and, uh, or what's your one liner? It wasn't even a tagline. It was a one liner. And she did the three prong thing. And I was like, you're way cooler than that. You know, why are, why are you doing that? So we broke it down and, and we made it into something really simple that people can immediately grab onto because the three prong thing, again, I said this last week in, um, about the one liner, your one liner and you know, what you say about your business is not a performance, right? It's not a, it's not a monologue, and I think so many people treat it like a monologue, but when somebody asks you what you do and you go off on this monologue with these three prongs and, you know, um, people, they turn off. They're just like, oh, you're performing right now, right? So it's got to feel real, right? And again, I just want to reiterate that your tagline is not something you say, but it's something that you write. It's usually under the logo on your website. Uh, you know, maybe top left. That's where a lot of people are putting their logo these days. It comes up in the search engine, right? So for example, Lyft and then Lyft's tagline is a ride whenever you need one, right? So it's just like the nutshell of your business. What are you offering? How am I going to feel when I say yes to you? Okay. So I hope that's becoming more clear for you. Um, yeah. Danielle is writing, uh, I really resonate with you encouraging us to be ourselves and be creative. Exactly, right? Because people can feel that energy. People want to be included and involved in something that you think is awesome, right? I always say that marketing is like uh, in a party, right? Imagine you are throwing a party and you're not excited about it or you're like copying somebody else's template for a party people aren't going to get excited because they can't feel that excitement from you, right? So you've got to pump your energy into it and your creativity. So people kind of, they pay attention, they stop, they take notice, right? Because your business is a unique expression of your soul. Uh, so doing it like everybody else is really, it's sad. It's, it's wasting an opportunity that you have to express yourself. And it's also wasting an opportunity for other people to know you as a human and experience your gifts and what you're offering to people. So yeah, I encourage you to be your creative, awesome, badass self and communicate in a clear way so people can understand what the hell you're about. Okay. Because if you can't figure out how to communicate it, um, then again, it's another lost opportunity. Uh, I think I, I said it last time and I'll say it again. Richard Branson, uh, you know, head of, of Virgin Airlines is, he is one of my favorite people in the world. I, I want to meet him. Richard, if you're watching this, like, let's go have a drink sometime. He is so wonderful. And one of the things I really appreciate about Richard is that Sir Richard, excuse me, uh, he, um, really understands the power of storytelling. And he knows that even if you have an incredible value proposition, an incredible service that you're offering to people, if you can't let people know about it, 
in an efficient and effective way, then they're not going to pay attention. So your messaging is really huge, and I encourage you to focus your attention on your messaging, um, you know, as one of the major aspects of your business, right? You pay attention to, you know, how you put your image out there, right? Your, like what photos you post of yourself online or on your website. But I encourage you to think about the words. Words are really powerful, right? How are you encouraging people to think about your business. All right, I'm gonna put Richard back in his resting place above my desk. All right, so, um, all right, I'm gonna wrap it up uh, for now, but um, come uh, next week, uh, so that's August 25th, I'm gonna do the last part in the series. We're gonna talk about websites and what is the effective use of a landing page. How are you communicating your business with your website because really your website is now it is your online business card right so you want to be efficient you want to be clear and you want to um, have them experience an emotion right because it's all about emotion right it's not it's not about really what you're offering because there are so many people in this world offering similar things it is about how you're allowing them to feel, what they get to feel, not what they get, okay? It's not about what they get, it's about what they get to feel. So how are you communicating that with your website? Today we talked about taglines, and um, last week we talked about your one-liner. So I hope this is um, a good learning for you, and I, I just encourage you to keep thinking about your messaging for your business. Um, so come next week, August 25th, same time, 10 a.m., at um, Rebecca Williams Works, my business page. And um, that's it. If you're interested in individualized one-on-one -on -one support with your business, I work one-on-one -on -one with clients and I'd be happy to hear what you're struggling with and see how I can help you. And the link for a one-on-one -on -one session with me, totally complimentary first session, is um, it's in the sidebar there. So get in touch. I look forward to uh, speaking with you and seeing how I can help you. And that's it. Signing off. Bye, Daniela. Bye, bye Bonnie. And I'll see you next week. All right. Bye. Kisses, hearts, likes. Bye. <laughs>